Well, good early evening. I was um, reading in John chapter 5. Jesus was healing at the beginning of the chapter and he was telling the man that he could take his bed and walk and he was even speaking to the Jews and the Jews was out to get rid of Jesus and they was getting upset with Jesus because he was using the words that he was he was being made equal to God or at least that's what the Jews was accusing him of and then we find two verses down here that when I got to these two verses, I just thought, well, there's a message here. And maybe it's a message that somebody might not know. There might be a little bit of information that somebody might not be aware of. And I have tried my best to make it crystal clear. And I will continue to do my best to make it crystal clear. And uh, I will be the first to admit that I don't go into deep detail. I'm not a, um, a theologian by no means. But I'm glad that I know how to read. I'm glad that I can look at my Bible and know how to read my Bible and study my Bible. And I don't believe that I'm very far off from what the message is tonight. I'm looking at verse 28 when Jesus was talking to the Jews and he gets on down. And the first thing that he says in John chapter 5 and verse 28, he says, marvel not at this. Now, could he have been talking about what to marvel about far as verses 24 and 25 when he was talking about the dead and the dead shall hear his voice of the Son of God? He could have very well meant to don't marvel at this because he said here in verse 28, marvel not at this. And here's where he goes into a story that I think that people need to be reminded of. For the hour is coming. Talking about future tense. The hour is coming. The hour is approaching. In which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Now, he's not talking just about the Christians. He's talking about everybody that are in the graves is going to hear the voice of the Son of God. It's the timing of when they hear the voice. All people whether you're saved or you're lost, is going to hear the voice because it makes it very clear for the hour is coming into which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. That means saved and unsaved. That doesn't mean that the saved and the unsaved is going to hear at the same time. The saved is going to hear when the Lord yells out the shout, the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. When his voice comes to get the redeemed, the ones that are born again, 
the ones that are born from above, the redeemed, the people who have salvation, the people who believe in the Lord Jesus, they are the ones that's going to hear this voice first. God's not going to get up the ones that didn't know him at that time. God has a certain order of how he's going to do things. And he lets us know right here that the ones that are in the graves shall hear his voice. That doesn't mean that we all are going to hear at the same time. The dead that are in the graves that are saved is going to hear the voice. God is going to be loud enough to wake every dead saint up. Every dead, born-again child of God is going to hear the voice of the Son of God. When the voice of the Son of God calls, he's going to wake them up. And then it goes into verse 29. And shall come forth, meaning not only are they going to wake up, but they're going to get up. They're not going to continue to lay in that grave. When they hear the voice, that means that their body automatic, automatically is made alive. Now, I realize that that sounds a little bit too good to be true, but that's what that verse says. And shall come forth, meaning all the bodies that are in the grave, I happen to know where there's one grave right now that has the ashes with the mother right now. And regardless of whether one is ashes and the other one is bones, God is going to speak to both the ashes and the bones, that is, if both of them knew the Lord Jesus, and I believe that they did, I believe one knew him maybe a little better than the other one. I believe that God had grace on both of them. And I believe also that that grace was probably made evident to one more so than the other. But you know what? Grace is grace. Thank God for grace. How could anybody today not thank the Lord for the grace of God today? It blows my mind to hear someone say that grace is not really that big a deal. Oh, yes, it is a big deal. Grace is a big deal. It's a big deal for the ones who are saved because the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Paul nailed that verse down, and yet people do not believe his word. Some people will even make fun of Paul's words. I'm not going to do that. Paul wrote what he wrote, and he said what he said, and he meant what he said. Jesus is saying these words right here, and shall come forth they that have done good. Now, there's only... One good thing that a person can do. The only thing that a person can do is accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Because good works, he's not talking about good works here. He's talking about the one decision that makes you the one that hears the voice of the Lord. There's one thing that is required 
of you to hear the voice of the Lord call if something was to happen and I should go to the grave, there's only one thing that's going to matter to God above all others. Whether I was born from above, whether I was born by the Spirit of God, the ones that are born by the Spirit of God is going to hear the voice of the Son of God call. The voice is going to be clear and crystal clear. It's going to be sharp, and it's going to be to the point. And you're not going to have to wonder if somebody's trying to wake you up. No, you're going to hear the voice of God. And the Bible says here, And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. The good that he's referring to here, is the good of personal salvation. Personal salvation is what the Lord means when he says, the ones that have done good unto the resurrection of life, meaning they believed the gospel. They believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They believed it with all their heart. And see, what God's going to do, God's going to speak a voice into man's ears that are laying in the grave, that are dead. But he's not going to just call the dead. We know that. He's going to call the ones that are alive, too. But this is not talking about the ones that are alive. This is only talking about the ones that are in the grave unto the resurrection of life. Talking about life eternal. But guess what? Remember, there was another group of people. And he says this. And they that have done evil. You know, there's only one evil you can do. There's only one evil that God will count as evil. And that evil is unbelief. Unbelief is the biggest evil that there is. I would be willing to bet money tonight that if there was a hundred thousand people that were in hell, that a good majority of all the hundred thousand that are in hell tonight was mostly good people. There's not a doubt in my mind about it that they were good people, but they chose to be an unbeliever. And what God calls them is they that have done evil. A person that commits an evil crime, a killing, a murder, a rape or incest is all a crime. It's wrongdoing against God and it's wrongdoing against man. But we're not talking about evil far as something evil you do. It's the action of unbelief. If you are an unbeliever in the Lord Jesus, Jesus looks at you like you are evil. You could be as good as gold to this community. There's a lot of people that are as good as gold to this community, to the community that helps and sings and plays music and does all of the things that they're supposed to do. But without salvation, you are a person of evil in the sight of God. I didn't say it. This verse in verse 29 said that. It says, And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So what does that mean? That means that the ones that are evil is also going to wake up as well. There's going to be a voice that's going to come to them as well. It's not going to happen at the same time. 
the ones that he calls that are saved and born from above is going to be called first. They're going to leave their grave behind and they're going up to meet the Lord in the air. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that we go to be with him in the air. But see, the ones that are evil, the ones that do not believe in Christ, that is not born again, that is not saved, is still going to remain in the grave for a thousand years. Now, why a thousand years? Because that's what the Bible says. At the end of the thousand years, there's going to be what we call a white throne judgment. Now, there's going to be a judgment for the one that are saved, but that judgment is only going to be for the rewards that that person is due. You take somebody that is a prosperity preacher, say they are born again, but say they've got off kilter, say they have got off the mark. You know what? God is still going to save. I hate it when I hear people say that God, that somebody is going to hell because of the fact that they're just a prosperity preacher. Maybe so, but if they've ever been born again and they got off the mark, salvation is still being given to them, but their rewards is going to be slim to none. I'm not giving a pass to people that are in the prosperity gospel ministry. I'm not giving a pass to them. I'm saying that God sees the thoughts and the intents of the heart. He, he knows the heart. He knows who it is that has money on their mind more than souls on their mind. And if you've got money on your mind more than that, more than you got souls on your mind, then you got a problem. And Jesus made it very clear in this verse up here, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. All will hear, but the ones that come up first are the ones who are born from above. The ones who have to stay in the grave for a thousand years is the ones that are lost, that didn't accept Jesus when they had the opportunity to accept him. And now they have to go before the white throne judgment. And when they go before the white throne judgment, there's only one thing that those people are going to be judged for. It's, they're not going to be judged so much on their bad deeds that they've done. They're going to be judged on one deed. And that deed is whether they knew Jesus or not. And whether they rejected Jesus or not. And if they rejected Jesus, which they have... Because they're at the white throne judgment, they will stand in front of the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew you. And he will pass judgment, and the, that judgment will be righteous judgment. It will be judgment that will not have to be questioned by anybody, even including the ones that he passes judgment on. We might go and say, well, Lord, that's a little bit unfair. No, it's not. Not to him, it's not. That's the reason he tells us to be prepared to go in the resurrection of life. You notice that both of them have the resurrection of life, but one is in the resurrection of damnation. A person that is in the resurrection of damnation is still alive, but they're alive in pain, in a most horrible, imaginable pain that your mind cannot even imagine. I would rather take the resurrection of life, and I can't even imagine it. Elderlyministry.com, there's a number there. 
You're welcome to call Elderly Ministry. Thank y'all for watching.